All right, let's start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakadash. That's Yahweh, being the true name of our Heavenly Father in Hebrew. Yahweh Shai, being the true name of our Lord and Savior. Rakakadash, being the Holy Spirit. Double honor to the elders and apostles, a great millstone for teaching us this truth. Honor to the brothers, pushing this truth, risking their life and freedom to do so. And we're coming back at you with another lesson through the power of the Holy Spirit. In this lesson here, we're going to talk about birthdays. Just a little something random that came to my mind through the Spirit. Because all of our people, we celebrate birthdays. And we celebrate birthdays heavily. That's probably one of the most celebrated holidays in America where people go all out and risk it all on that day. I know I used to risk it all. But we're going to show where birthdays come from. And we're going to show that um, a birthday is really folly when you consider what you're celebrating. But birthdays is in the scriptures. But the Israelites, we didn't celebrate birthdays. But the other nations of people around us celebrated birthdays. <clears throat> now we're going to read this little section here. It all started with the Egyptians. Yeah, because... Egypt is one of the uh, empires that celebrated birthdays. And we know America is modern day Egypt. That's what appeared pyramid on the back of the dollar. But let's read it. Scholars who study the Bible say that the earliest mention of a birthday was around 3000 BC. It was in reference to a Pharaoh's birthday. But further study implies that this was not their birth into the world but their birth as a God. So Pharaohs celebrated their birthday, not the day of their birth, but they believed it was them being transformed into a God. When Egyptian Pharaohs were crowned in ancient Egypt, they were considered to have transformed into gods. This was a moment in their lives that became more important than even their physical birth. Pagans such as the Greeks believed that each person had a spirit that was present on the day of his or her birth. The spirit kept watch and had a mystic relation with the God on whose birthday that particular individual was born. So these pharaohs on their birthday believed they were transformed into a God, which that's foolishness because they, they, they thought they transformed into gods, but they all dead now. They all died. And down here it say people believe that each person had a spirit that was present on the day of his or her birth. Birthday come with a bunch of demonic spirits. People risk it all. They do all kind of stuff. People wake up in jail. They wake up next to somebody they ain't supposed to be with. They wake up in all kind of effed up situations. But we gonna get Pharaoh's birthday in the scriptures. So now we had Genesis 40 and 20, and it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's B-Day, that he made a feast unto all his servants and lifted up the head of the chief butler and the chief baker among his servants. So yeah, uh, Pharaoh's birthday, they had a feast. That's why um, a lot of us now, we go out to eat, we have dinners, we get this from the Egyptians. So again, the third day, which is Pharaoh's birthday, he made a feast unto all his servants. So this is part of what we do today. The scriptures that tell you that we should discontinue from dying heritage. So we don't celebrate the holy days that we used to celebrate. Now we celebrate these fake holidays that was passed down from our various captivities. We learn how to celebrate birthdays from being in captivity by those who had us captive. We took on his ways. Now let's go to our next part. Number three, you can thank the Greeks for all those birthday candles. Because a birthday cake and, and, and birthdays, that's idol worship. You glorifying and worshiping yourself. That's why Egypt glorified themselves and believed that they was being transformed into gods. That's idol worship. 
God and goddesses were a huge part of Greek culture. Greeks offered many tributes and sacrifices to appease these gods. The lunar goddess, Atremis, was no different. As a tribute to her, the Greeks will offer up moon-shaped cakes adorned with lit candles to recreate the glowing radiance of the moon and Artemis perceived beauty. So the cakes being covered in birthday candles was supposed to recreate the glow from the moon, which was the moon goddess. The candles also symbolized the sending of a signal or prayer. So lighting candles is supposed to send off a signal or a prayer to this fake moon goddess. Blowing out the candles with the wish is another way of sending that message to the gods. And once you actually blow out the candle, you know, that's what they say, blow out your candle, make a wish, that's you sending your prayer to this fake goddess. You see, this is all foolishness. This, this is a waste of money, this is a business, it's idol worship. And that's a capital offense and one of the worst sins that you commit, that you can commit before the Lord. And the Greeks and the Romans, are both white people. So that's why I'm, when we come down to verse five, or I'm sorry, uh, number five, the ancient Romans were the first to celebrate the birth of the common man. Yeah, because Egypt, um, only important people, you know, had their birthday celebrated, mainly being the pharaohs, when they thought they was being transformed to these gods. But here, Romans made it to where every body the average man, the average woman will celebrate their birthday. And we know America is the new Roman Empire, the updated, more modern version of Rome. This seems to be the first time in history where a civilization celebrated the birth of a non-religious figure. Regular Roman citizens will celebrate the birthdays of their friends and family members. The government, however, created public holidays in honor of more famous citizens. Yeah, that's what people do today. They celebrate the birthdays of their family members and friends. And the government celebrated or created holidays to honor more famous citizens. That's why you got George Washington Day, Christopher Columbus Day, all these white Edomite days to honor their birthdays. They did that in Rome. Any Roman turning 50 years old will receive a special cake baked with wheat flour, olive oil, grated cheese, and honey. But an important thing to know is that the only men, is that only men will experience this birthday celebration. Female birthdays were not celebrated until about the 12th century. So yeah, Romans um, celebrated their birthdays too, and they made it to where everybody celebrated it. And we got this tradition passed on to us from being in captivity under the Roman Empire and from being in captivity again under the new Roman Empire, which is America. Now we're going to show that they that the Romans celebrated their birthdays. Matthew chapter 14, verse 6, this is the New Testament. The Romans are white people, the people who crucified our Messiah. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them. And pleased Herod. So, had a birthday celebration, a feast, it was dancing. But from the scriptures, we see that the Egyptians, even the Greeks and the Romans, celebrated birthdays. And it's folly because something my dad told me when I was younger when you're celebrating your birthday, you one year closer to your death. So, you're really celebrating your death which is coming however long it takes to come. So for example, if you 88, you have a birthday, now you 89. Now you one year closer to death. You that much closer to dying. And that's actually what a birthday is. And that's why Esau the white man is known as death in the book of Habakkuk, which I just did a lesson on, because everything about him symbolizes and it symbolizes death. Because each birthday that passed, your clock winded down. And we're going to look at this little story in Isaiah chapter 38. 
In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amaz, came unto him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Sat thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. So Isaiah told Hezekiah, who was sick, you know, set your house in order, make the necessary um, plans for your death because you're going to die, which the Lord had mercy on him. He gave him a warning. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Yahweh, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. So he prayed to the Lord, like, Lord, uh, I was a faithful servant, pretty much. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord Yahweh, the God of thy father David, I have heard thy prayer, and I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will ask until thy days fifteen years. So the Lord, Yahweh Bashimi Shai, gave Hezekiah an extra fifteen years to live. Now you know Hezekiah was counting the years. Each year that passed, he was like, Alright, I got fourteen years left. Now thirteen, now twelve, all the way down to four years, to three years, to two years, to one year. And we count the years in the form of the birthdays, but counting the, but when you count the years, you're really counting down to your death date. Because you think Hezekiah was happy celebrating each birthday he had? Yeah, he lived to see another year, but since the Lord told him that you got 15 more years, he was probably getting more and more sadder as each birthday came along. Because he was actually counting down. And that's what we do on our birthdays. We counting down. We not counting up. And then we do all kind of stuff on our birthday. Like, like we go all out. We put all kind of stuff inside our body. We wind up sick and not making it. Because we do all this stuff not realizing that we one year older than we was before. So your body can't take all that abuse all those toxins, all those stressors that we put on our body, we go hard not realizing our body is a year older and can't take all that abuse. So yeah, uh, birthdays were celebrated by the Greeks, the Romans, and the Egyptians. We ourselves actually didn't celebrate birthdays. We had our high holy days that was given to us from Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. And the act of celebrating birthdays is us following the ways of the people around us, which the Lord commanded us to break away from these people and to break away from their ways. And we know also that lighting the cake and blowing out the candles is honoring a moon goddess and sending prayers to her. So celebrating the birthday is actually idol worship. In Revelation 18 and 4 reads, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. This her is Lady Liberty. This is America. So how do you come out of America? This not physically. This is spiritually. So detach from this place. Stop following the ways of the world, which will be the ways of America, that ye be not partakers of her sins. So stop following after America so you don't share in her sins. Because if you celebrate any holiday, even your birthdays, you are being partakers of her sins. You partaking in idol worship. You partaking in worshiping uh, fake gods. You sharing in her sins. And stop celebrating birthdays and these holidays so you don't partake in her sins. So you don't receive of her plagues when the Lord plagues this place. So you don't be destroyed and punished with this place. So that's the folly of birthdays. We celebrate like it's all about us, like we did something, not knowing that we one year closer to death. Now we can thank Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai 
for letting us see another year because there's so many ways to die. The Lord didn't put us to death and judgment. So we praise and thank him for letting us see another year, but praising ourselves, thinking we've been transformed into gods like the Egyptians, that's all foolishness. And so are all the ways of the world are foolishness before the Lord. So that's it for this lesson here. Until next time, Shalom.